All right, guys. Hi, my name is Crystal Powell, and I am currently a senior gold ambassador with Plexus. And I am very honored to speak tonight to you guys. I have a lot of information, and so I'm going to do my best to give this in a more concise way that I can. But know that I going to be several things I probably won't give a whole lot of detail on. But I am very happy to make my slideshow presentation available if people want to use it to go back and kind of do some of their own research. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, I am, I would say, still in the process of a health journey. 22 months ago, pretty much, my body crashed and I was bed bound for months. Um, in that process, I, <laughs> I, I'm a follower of Christ, so I totally went seeking God and trying to find answers and figure out what was wrong with me. So a lot of what I'm going to share today is a lot of what I've learned and a lot of what I've researched and information brought together, and it's a lot of information that's put out by what's called functional medicine doctors. So they're people who actually look for root causes and then look to treat them. And you're going to find out tonight a little bit more about how Plexus fits in with all of that and why you um, are getting a lot of success with the products as well, I really believe, and then what we can also do to help be even better. But tonight's presentation is based off of the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. This is something that's heavy on my heart. This is something my desires to, to press on this information. But Jesus said in John chapter 10 that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Well, I really believe that we should all be living abundantly and we should all be happy and healthy and feel well. But unfortunately, it's like something has come in and I feel like it's snuck in the door and it's taken over our health. And we all need our eyes kind of open to what's going on and what we can do to take it back. So tonight is going to be some information to help you take it back so that you can live that abundant life. I think most of us would agree that, um, or maybe, maybe you hadn't thought about it this way, but let me stop and say this. Our gut, when I say our gut, I'm talking about our digestive tract, talking about small intestine, large intestines, through all the way through the colon and out the other end. There is a whole lot that goes on right there in that one section, and that's what I'm going to call our war zone. We don't know it or don't realize it, or I didn't. I should tell you, I'm a physical therapist. I've worked for 15 years, and I've never heard doctors until recently talking about this kind of stuff. Um, I didn't realize the depth of what was going on in there. And if you don't know it, 80% or more, they agree on at least 80% of our immune system is within our gut. So we've got to take care of it. Unfortunately, things like our American diet is, is absolutely destroying us. Most people would agree GMOs are probably not good, pesticides, antibiotics in our food supply, they're just wiping out our gut. It's like they're coming in, we don't even know it, and they're winning the war with inside of us and tearing us apart. And if you don't realize that even having one soda a day over a month is four pounds of sugar going on in your body. That is just destroying your health, our health. And um, so in case you don't know it, but you get sick, your kids get sick, it takes one gram of sugar and it shuts down your immune system for six hours. One gram, six hours. So let's think about this. What do we do when we get sick? We drink Gatorade. We drink, um, well, I was trying to think, what's uh, ginger ale? A lot of different things like that, right? Well, I just, I caution you. You might want to think about that a little bit more when you're going down that way. And of course, our American lifestyle, we live very stressful lives. And I like to say it's kind of like it's the submarine. It's kind of under the surface, and we're not even realizing the depth of what's going on until it's right in our face, and the stress has shut down our body, and it's about to kill us. And then, um, if any of you have ever heard, there's a doctor named Josh Axe. I like his description of this. You think about the war in our gut, you throw in an antibiotic, you threw an atomic bomb right inside you. 
once you've gone on a round of even one antibiotic, you've destroyed so many of your good bacteria that keep things under control that now your what's called your microbiome is like out of balance. Your yeast and bacteria and everything inside you is like out of whack. And then there's grenades. Then you throw in things like food that has, high in, has gluten in it, like your breads. And then your dairy that you buy at the store, um, taking oral birth control pills, soy, and of course sugar. All these things are just like they're winning this war inside your gut and uh, we're losing our health in the process. And these are all stuff I'm putting here. You might want to do some research or ask me more questions later. But what happens in the process is we develop what's called a leaky gut syndrome. And I want to tell you that pretty much if you're on this call and you're on Plexus, it's because you have some level of a leaky gut syndrome. You've lost, you start losing the lining of your intestines and your immune system begins to go kind of in overdrive. And it can go to the point where it attacks your body yourself. So a few things that can cause this is stress. It raises um, a hormone called cortisol and that thins out the lining of your gut. If you uh, take especially a lot or a regular basis of what's called non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, Aleve, things like that, thins out your gut, your diet, oral birth control pills. And then of course, if you have an overgrowth of harmful yeast or bacteria in your digestive tract, which likely if you've ever been on even one antibiotic, you have at least harmful yeast, if not more than that, going on in your system, they can start to burrow holes and end up leaking, causing this lining of your gut to be destroyed. So here's just a few signs of the leaky gut. A couple of things, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but number one, if you're experiencing heart palpitations, you ha likely have a leaky gut. And when you're eating something, it's getting in your system, your body's reacting, and your heart rate's going up. That's like your warning signal that something's not right, need to deal with my gut issues going on here. Uh, skin disorders, painful joints, those are all things. Trouble sleeping, emotional swings, changes in your menstrual cycle. Guys, let me tell you something. Um, I, I started my cycle as a young, young girl, and I've had severe cramping and severe bleeding until I got my gut right. Now, I can have a cycle on time, and I may not even have a cr single cramp anymore. So I just want to encourage you, until I went through this process of healing, I never connected my menstrual cycle with what I'm eating and with what's going on in my gut. Never knew it. And, you know, I'm very blessed. I have five kids, but having five kids does not mean I had a sex drive. Just being open and honest and blunt right here. Did not. Let's just say my husband is a much happier man these days, now that I'm so much healthier. <laughs> and then, of course, gas and bloating issues. And then let me leave you with my last one. My father-in-law, I love him. He's a great guy. As a matter of fact, he has an amazing plexus testimony with his blood sugar levels. Ah, incredible. But I'm not here to talk about that. But he likes to say... He who goes to bed with stinky bottom wakes up with, excuse me, goes to bed with itchy bottom, wakes up with stinky finger. Sorry, I kind of messed that one up, but I think you get my point. All right, if you've got an itchy bottom, guys, you've got a level of leaky gut. All right, moving on. So what happens when you have leaky gut? Well, unfortunately, you've lost so many of your good bacteria in your gut, and whether you know it or not, they actually ferment your food. So your food goes in your gut, they ferment it, they break it down, and then your nutrients become extracted and go into your body, and your body uses it. Well, mostly, most people are very deficient in vitamin B12, in folate, in ferritin, which is a more active reading of your iron in your blood, in vitamin D3, and other B vitamins. And they're low in this because they're low in the bacteria that actually help to produce and make these things inside your gut. And I think that those of us who've been in Plexus long enough to know about our products recognize that many of these things are in some of our products and it's partly why people are having good success because we are a society so low on these things. I didn't put on this list, but another thing too is magnesium. Very, very low in magnesium in our society. 
Then the next thing that typically happens, we have impaired hormone levels. We're not able to produce and make them. And it usually affects our thyroid and our adrenal glands, which makes things like estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, and a bunch of other ones. And I'm not going to go into detail, but then also your vitamin D3. Vitamin T3, some people refer to as a hormone. But what I want you to know about vitamin D3 is that it's what's called a fat-soluble vitamin. If you are low in vitamin D3, you are not processing and digesting fat appropriately within your gut. And that's something you want to look at working on. And if you're someone who's like, say, probably had gallbladder surgery, you likely are having a lot of issues with things like vitamin D and fat. All right, moving on. So as part of the leaky gut as well, you end up often with what we call those bacteria, virus, and yeast that are just looking for the opportunity to grow. So you lose the good bacteria within your digestive system now these bad guys start to grow and get out of control. And most of us have some horrid level of particularly yeast or other things in our system. For me, I had such terrible, harmful yeast in my body that it destroyed my gut. And then my body quit making hormones. My body quit producing these vitamins and all this other stuff. And it just became a spiral to the point where I was bed bound for almost nine months. So what's really important to understand about this is that for every one of our cells, human cells in our body, for every one of us, there is 10, 10 microbiomes. That means there's 10 bacteria, virus, yeast, 10 more of them than there are us. So true health is about keeping us, or I should say them, <laughs> In balance. When they're in balance, we're in balance. So the, the other thing to talk about here briefly is when we have a leaky gut, we end up with what's called food sensitivities, or some people will say food allergies. It's a delayed food allergy. It's not an immediate thing. Um, it's not like you're going to eat this food and you're going to go into to shock and end up in the ER. You're going to eat this food and it's going to cause an inflammation response and it's likely going to show up in some way. One of those on that list I sh uh, showed you earlier. Some people it shows up on their skin. Some people it shows up in their joints. Some people it affects their brain and it like shuts them down. Um, there's lots of different ways and things that can happen. But let me encourage you, if you, you eat a food and it raises your heart rate at all, you are likely have a food sensitivity to that food. It's usually foods that you eat on a regular basis. And the most common is gluten, dairy, soy, peanuts, and sugar. That's the most common. And then there could be anything. I had testing done, and I'm even sensitive to chicken and egg whites and green peas. Like, my list was horrendous type thing. But... I'm healing and I'm starting to bring those foods back in. Praise God. So let's, let's talk about briefly what happens if you don't resolve your leaky gut. Unfortunately, then it leads to things like chronic diseases, neurological diseases, what's called type 3 diabetes. This is something I think everyone with Implexus ought to know about. Because type 3 diabetes is what they're actually calling Alzheimer's now. There's a huge connection between blood sugar control and Alzheimer's. And then, of course, if you don't resolve it, many people will end up with autoimmune diseases. So here's the good news, guys. Now I've given you some depressing news, right? Here's the good news. We can fight back and win this battle. All those things can be reversed. That's the great thing about it. It takes a little work, but we can do it. So let's talk a little bit about that. This is what I call the five R's of recovery. You're going to rebalance your microbiome. That means rebalance the yeast and the bacteria and the virus and everything in your gut. Remove toxins from your body. Replace those high inflammation foods with anti-inflammatory foods. Remove food sensitivities and reseal your gut. So we're going to start with rebalancing your microbiome. The, um, 
you want to figure out what is the problem and try to get it under control and then increase the probiotic strands that are inside your gut and then maintain that through um, probiotics and, and, uh, and if you can tolerate them, cultured foods. So let's start off first with the rebalance in the microbiome. And of course, look what's on our screen, the ProBio 5. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how that fits into this rebalancing. Ideally, in an ideal world, we would probably all go see what, um, what I would call a functional medicine doctor or a naturopathic doctor, someone who could do a stool sensitive stool, what's called a stool analysis test. They would look to see what is in your gut. Do you have an overgrowth of yeast? Do you have an overgrowth of um, SIBO, which is called small intestine bacteria? Do you have Clostridium difficile? Okay, if I even said that right, but it's C. diff or H. pili or whatever it is. But I will tell you that even if you don't go that far to getting a stool test, you can still fix this issue. I don't know what a current statistic would be, but it is really high in the amount of people who have yeast overgrowth, really high, and particularly this very harmful yeast growth called candida. So helping to find the root cause and then addressing it through things like antifungals and probiotics. This is just the ingredient list. These are things that are on uh, inside our ProBio5, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each of them. First of all, let's talk with the um, chidosinase. This is an enzyme. The ProBio5 has several enzymes in it. It actually breaks through the exoskeleton of, of fungi. Fungi and yeast, same thing. If I said fungus, know that I mean yeast. Same thing, okay? So, yeast are smart and they want to survive. So they have this hard thing, like a shell covering on them. And they are like protected in this little shell. Not much can get into them. This one enzyme in our ProBio5 helps to break through that shell, getting rid of it, and then it's able to attack and kill out the yeast. It also works on a bacteria, some bacterial overgrowth as well. So this one enzyme, makes a major impact. And um, in my health, it made a major impact and it's likely making one in yours too, even if you don't know it. Now another enzyme that's in this is called protease. Basically protease is an enzyme that breaks down protein and it's, uh, it's secreted or put off by your pancreas in your body. We are not, I think it's probably because of our American diet, that's the way I understand it. But most of us do not produce enough enzymes or enough acid in our stomach to break down our food appropriately. I have a child under the age of 10 who's had some very specific testing done. And this child was his testing came back telling us he does not make enough of these enzymes. He, at, under the age of 10, is having to take supplements to help him break down protein and break down fat, and it's shown up in an, a, specific, a certain way in his body. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. This is the cellulase. Cellulase is an enzyme that breaks down cellulose. Okay, cellulose is a carbohydrate. It's the main part of the cell walls of plants. Um, we don't actually, God didn't actually make our bodies to um, produce an enzyme to break down the outer parts of the plant. But ideally, we would have enough digestive um, bacteria that they would break it down for, for us. But unfortunately, as I've described so far, we don't have enough bacteria to ferment and break down our food. So we need help. So in order for us to get the most nutrition, out of, say, the cell walls of plants, which we should all be eating a lot of plants, then this enzyme right here helps us do the job. So this is not one that's talked about a lot, but the more I researched and read about it, the more I realized this is doing something that needs to be done. And then the, um, see if I can say this right, ser serapeptase, we'll say serapeptase, maybe it's serapeptase, I don't know. 
Well, that is actually taken from the silkworm. It's used in Europe and Japan to treat painful conditions, and you can read more about it. I mean, you can just go to the WebMD and put this in, and it's going to give you a lot of information. But it, it's used a lot, like I said, in Europe and Japan to, for conditions that involve a lot of discomfort and swelling and a lot of bowel issues. Um, it's kind of making its way in the United States. It's one of the things I like about Flexus. I feel like Flexus is ahead of the, the game. Like we kind of know what's going on and they're producing products that has great things like this in them. But it has a very distinct ability to digest uh, non-living tissues that are allowing the toxic layers in our digestive system to clear out. So basically it helps to break down things that are still sitting in our digestion causing problems that could be very toxic to us and to clear it out of us. So that's a good thing. Now let's, let's talk about the probiotic strands that are in the ProBio 5. I get asked a lot about probiotics. This is one of those topics that like you can hear one person say one thing and one person say another thing and like so I'm just putting it together my knowledge base of what I understand, what I've researched, and I'm passing it on to you. Know that you should always take at least five probiotic strands. So for the probio five, it's fantastic for that. If you or someone you know is only taking like one strand, it could be causing that imbalance to get worse. You need to know you always need at least five probiotic strands. Lactobacillus strands, bifidobacterium strands, bacillus coagulans, those are all what's called beneficial bacteria. They are the ones you want to replenish in your digestive system. They are ones that help us to ferment our food, to break it down, to get our nutrition, all those kinds of things. Um, and then the bacillus coagulans, it's really interesting, but it's used a lot to treat very diarrhea type disorders. I know that's not always fun to talk about, but hey, we got to talk about this and other gut, gut disorders. So it actually is one that I don't see very commonly in a whole lot of other probiotics. So I think that's a huge plus to Plexus. But it's, um, when you've even been on one round of antibiotic, you've, if you yourself, you may know someone, if it's not you, who took an antibiotic and then had a horrible diarrhea, quite honestly that's generally a sign of a way now overgrowth of what's called C. diff in your body. So things like this bacillus coagulans are helping to treat conditions like that and get that back under control. And then the uh, lactobacillus planetarum, so once you know there is some more research that's kind of coming out, and I listed Donna Gates here as someone you can look her up with what's called body ecology, but it is one of those strands that is not as commonly killed by our modern antibiotics. So it's one that's good to be taking, especially if you're on an antibiotic, you can keep replenishing type thing. And then um, I'd say this is my favorite one, the Saccharomyces boulardii. This is actually a yeast strand. <laughs> you're like, yeast? It's a probiotic Yeast, that means it kills off the bad guys. It gets rid of these harmful yeast in our system, and it actually helps to clear up um, harmful bacteria like C. diff as well. And then um, the last ingredient I'm going to talk about a little bit is grape seed extract. Know that that is a strong antioxidant. It's used to treat circulation and cardiovascular conditions. But what I would encourage you to know is that it could possibly interact with blood thinners. There's no research proving it does or it doesn't. But if you're going to have surgery or something like that, make sure you talk to your doctor and make sure it's safe to take, to continue to take. And then um, continue to talk about when in the war, things that are okay with the probio, because these are questions I get. Yes take it while you were on an antibiotic. God forbid, I hope I never have to take an antibiotic again in my life. It's destroyed my health. If I do though, I will make sure I stay on my ProBio 5. Just take it at least two hours apart, but you are likely not going to allow your gut to get so wiped out if you continue to stay on the probiotic. So stay on the ProBio 5. Yes, you can take it with a meal or without a meal. As we talked about, all these enzymes really are fantastic because they're going to help you pr 
process and digest your food and break it down and all that kind of stuff as well. Some people do better taking it with a meal. Some people do better taking it without a meal. And yes, it's totally okay to take more than once a day. Definitely take more than once a day. It, some people help, and there's a lot more research starting to come out, saying that taking probiotics two, maybe even three times a day is even more beneficial, probably because it's helping you digest your food even more. Things that are not okay with the probio five. Number one, it's not okay to forget to take it. It does not work if you don't take it. Take the ProBio 5. And then the other thing I just wanted to caution you before surgery um, because of the grape seed extract. Like I said, I can't tell you one way or the other, but I'd say just talk to your doctor about it. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about some common recommendations often. A lot of doctors doctors will say, you need to have at least 10 to 20 or more billion probiotic strands daily. Some doctors even recommend taking 100 billion for like a month. And then some will say you need to rotate probiotics every three to four months. Here's the thing. If you have a serious overgrowth, especially if things like yeast in your system or bacteria, and you continue to take even a super high dose probio, a probiotic, and you're throwing it in, you're throwing it in, you're throwing it in there. You're constantly competing with the yeast or the overgrowth in your system. Our ProBio 5 may not have 10 to 20 billion units, but it has the ability to bring down that yeast strand, getting rid of it, so that now your, your bacteria can implement in. So it has a more powerful effect, and many people get on it even after taking high, high-dose probiotics and find that they get even better results because of that one factor. So I really like to encourage um, the people on my team and my customers to really work up to taking four of those probio fives. You want to really use them to help clear out your system and re-implement the, the probiotic strands, but go very slow because you are likely going to have some level of detox symptoms, and that is something you can talk to your upline about. Um, but go very slow. Start at one and then work yourself up there. Now, once you get to a place where you feel like your symptoms are under control, um, you don't really have any more detox symptoms, you're feeling good, this might be four months, this might be six months, this might be a year. I personally would encourage you to consider at that point adding in some other probiotic strands so that you get uh, even a wider variety with the probio 5 so that you get a higher amount and you kind of replenish more of that healthy bacteria in your gut. That is me personally. And then you could rotate them through even if you wanted to. I personally don't like to and don't desire to get off of the ProBio 5 because of what it's doing for me and for my health. But I do think that some people are lacking other probiotic strands and you might want to add it in. So it's okay to do that is my whole point. Stay on the ProBio 5 or add in more probiotic strands. So, next one we're going to talk about is removing toxins. Just a second, I'm sorry. Okay, continue to fight back. Now, removing toxins from your body. This is so vitally important, guys. We... We are breathing toxic air. We are drinking toxic water. We are bathing our babies in toxic water. Like, and you really start going into all of this. I mean, some of you are probably like, this lady's crazy. She's saying all this stuff and I can't take it in. I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I promise you. I apologize if I am. But I just want you to know, we are in a toxic world and we need to do something about it. It gets in our bodies. First of all, we need to increase your bowel movements. <laughs> Then we need to increase your digestion, and we're going to talk a little bit about other ways to help detox. Removing your toxins from your body. First of all, guys, we got to talk about poop. I know it's not fun and pleasant, but we have to. If you are not having a minimum of one bowel movement a day, you are holding toxins in your body. Ideally, you would be going two or three times a day. Once a week is not good at all. You've got so much stuff leaving, sitting in your gut. So let's talk a little bit about the bio cleanse. 
Now, the BioCleanse is a wonderful magnesium supplement. It actually helps to oxygenize your GI tract or your gut. What happens is when it does that, you actually have a lot of these overgrowth of bacteria or yeast or things in your system that tend to die off because they can't handle that extra bit of oxygen there. It also is really good because it helps to clear out, when that oxygen gets in there, clear out some unfermented food. Think about if your food's sitting in your gut and it's not being fully broke down, it's not working out right, then you've got a lot of stuff going on there that shouldn't be and uh, contributing to a lot of health issues. So you want to clear that out. Now, it's really interesting too, because if you really do a little more research into the BioCleanse, you find out that it also helps to rebalance some of your pH. When we have a very acidic body, that's not good. Let's just say that's poor health. When we go to more neutral alkaline, that's a body working functioning like it more like it should. So in that situation, um, you want to be you you want more of an more of an alkaline body. So you can research it and read about it, but just know that this BioCleanse helps to keep things back in order. And a lot of yeast will let off acids in your body just to survive. Let me talk about one more thing on this here. I just want you to know if you Start with BioCleanse. You need to go slow as well. You could have a detox symptom pretty easily, and you, don't, you just don't know, so go slow. I encourage people to do like one at a time for several days before they bump it up to another one. Some people, two is all they need. Some people need three. Some people need all four. If you go up to all four and you're still having very few bowel movements, guys, I hate to tell you this, but there's something wrong and you need to get some more assessment and you need to figure that out because the BioCleanse should be helping you to stay regular and you should not be constipated while you're on it. All right, so let's just talk briefly about a few more things. Um, removing toxins to your body also means you increase your digestion. And if you can add in onions and garlic, I know, stinky breath, but happy tummy. <laughs> Onions and garlic are going to help you tremendously. And then sometimes people just need to take what's called digestive enzymes. You can get them at a store, and of course we have some of those we've talked about already in the ProBio 5. Some people need more hydrochloric acid for a couple of months because your body's not producing enough. If you've been living on an American high carb diet, high sugar, low fat, your body is not likely making enough. So I'm just telling you general things. Research them yourself, and you can check into them. Um, chew your food 30 times. We do this at our house. We sit around the table, and we, we start it off like counting. How many times did you chew that bite of food? And we'll sit there and go, one, two, three. I know it gets old, but it's trying to teach my kids healthy habits from very early age. Chew your food. That's the first line of defense of digesting your food. Eat slow and be happy. Do you know that you'll digest your food better if you go sit in a quiet, calm, peaceful restaurant versus if you go to that place that's loud and noisy, you're not likely gonna digest your food well. Other ways to detox. Um, the bowel movement is the best thing. You gotta have bowel movements, you just have to. But let me just tell you a couple of things that'll help too. Taking things like detox baths, using an infrared sauna, colonics, coffee enemas, all those things will help you as well. And they'll help to decrease your food sensitivities. They'll help to decrease lots of things and just getting stuff out of your body. I put on here my favorite. I like to take what's called an Epsom salt bath. If I could take one every day, I would. I put two cups Epsom salt in hot water and soak until it gets nice and cool. When I first started doing that for the first, I don't know, maybe three, five days, my water drain my bath water and my bathtub would be like black. So you just never know what junk is in your body and it's going to come on out. All right, next one, the five R's of recovery is to remove food sensitivities from your diet. Just to tell you, um, if you really think, okay, yeah, I want to dive into this. I want to know more. I'm thinking, yeah, this makes sense. There's something going on between what I'm eating. The first thing you want to do is remove these first 
five food sensitivities, which would be sugar. And aren't you thankful for plexus that can help you crave those curving or curve those cravings for sugar and dairy and gluten and peanuts and soy. And if you do this, let me encourage you, read your labels. If this is the first time you've ever thought about this, you're going to be shocked when you go to the grocery store and you pick up your food item and you read it and you're like, oh, that's in it. Oh, that's in it. It's in, these things are in everything. Of course, if you go out to eat, you can't hardly, it's hard to avoid these things. You might even want to consider doing what's called a Whole30 elimination diet. You can go to their website, Whole30.com. A lot of people find major relief. And if you want to speed up your weight loss, if that's really part of your goals for your health, this is an amazing way to do it. Um, my family, um, four of us lost between 10 and 15 pounds pounds in the first month of just removing these things. This is before I introduced plexus into my life. All right, the next one, replace high inflammation foods with anti-inflammatory foods. All right, when you eat, everything you eat has the power to cause inflammation in your body or to decrease inflammation in your body. I like to describe it like this. If you went outside and you're walking in your backyard and there's a hole and you step into it, you twist your ankle, ow, what's going to happen? Now you've got a sprained ankle. It's likely going to swell up. It's going to turn red. It might be hot to touch. It may be painful. Guys, when we eat, our food has the ability to do the same thing on the inside, but we're not thinking about it doing it on the inside. So I'd encourage you to do your research. Research omegas, omega-3s and omega-6s. And then omega-3s help to decrease inflammation in your body, and most omega-6s raise inflammation. And our American diet is really high in omega-6s, causing a lot of inflammation in our body. So there are things you can do to add into your diet. And here on the right is a picture of Mega X. Mega X is such a wonderful product because it is giving us the healthy omegas that help to decrease the inflammation in our bodies. So if you do not have a diet, especially that is high in things like wild caught fish, grass fed beef, pastured animals, um, if you do not have a diet higher in like flax, walnut oils, different things like that, then you definitely, definitely want to consider adding Mega X into your routine so that it can help you to decrease that inflammation in your body. Winning the war means really, when you think about what you're eating, consider making sure that your diet is primarily plant-based. Um, but not have to be completely. And I know that some people may choose other options for food, but generally speaking, the more vegetables, proteins you can put in your body, the better. Look into making sure that you know that you're eating healthy fats and oils. I had to drastically increase my fat intake. I was not healthy and well. And I will tell you that over this process, I've lost 45 pounds. And I eat more fat than I ever ate in my life. So don't buy the lie on the low-fat diet. Add in prebiotic foods. And then um, consider adding in plant-based anti-inflammatory foods. Things like berries and onions and garlic and leeks, broccoli, cauliflowers, greens, things like that. All right, briefly, I'm going to tell you the last little R here. This is reseal your gut. All right, so we talked about rebalancing the microbiome and how we can do that even using plexus. We talked about removing toxins out of our bodies even using plexus. Food, dealing with our food sensitivities, they're causing all these problems. And then the food that's causing inflammation in our body. And the last one is now we want to reseal the lining of your digestive or your intestines. There are several different things you can do. Um, you, you can read read about online there's tons of information about bone broth or doing gelatin there's grass-fed gelatin that's very helpful uh, dgl and then l-glutamine 
And I'll tell you, L-glutamine is an ingredient that is in um, the Plexus um, P96 shake as well. Uh, so those are all just different things that you can do to help. And of course, I just want to end this. What happens when you win the war? You take back your health which I know that you are on here because you care about your health and you're already working on winning this war. It means that you get your life back and then you begin living abundantly. I hope and pray that each of you get to a place where I am now, where I had no idea how bad I felt until now I know how good I feel. It's a wonderful place to be and I would like to take every one of you with me. So that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself while we have Crystal here. And I'm sure she has an answer for you. With the Epsom salt bath, how often do you recommend doing that? And I'm just going off of what other doctors recommend and what I read online and things like that daily. You can do them daily as much or as, as much as you want to. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. What is DCL? Uh, I think that was the last slide. DGL. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, DGL. DGL. D. Oh, I have to look it up real quick. It's licorice. It's deglyceride licorice, I think is what it is. If you Google it, it'll come right up. I okay. Promise. But basically, it's licorice root. Okay. And it helps to reline, um, helps to reline um, the intestinal, wall, intestinal walls. Okay. Yeah, somebody put it on the screen on the bottom if you want to look. There it is, deglycerized licorice. Thank you so much, Jamie. You're welcome. I googled. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? I was kind of curious about, about the ProBio 5 and how you were saying to take another probiotic besides the ProBio 5. I mean, that's been a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. Is the probiotic because I yes. have seriously had some serious issues. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I already take like three at night. Maybe I should be taking four, but I couldn't imagine taking any more than that. <laughs> oh, I totally understand. And understand what I'm saying. Like once you feel like your, your problem area, like if you have a, a bad yeast, like I did, you want to continue on that probile five until that's under control. And I do think most people will get the most benefit by going up to four. Uh, so, you know, if you get to two or three, then you may be totally okay with that. And that might be all that your body really needs. But I think most people will get past far more issues if they get on up to that fourth one. And then once you feel things are under control, then consider that you might want to add in some other probiotic strands, like a probiotic that has different bacterial strands from ours. That's what I'm saying, so that you can now kind of add in more variety within that gut, if that makes sense. Okay. Well, on the bio cleanse, because I was the person with, you know, that new commercial that's out, like, like the intestines, like I was that person, the IBS with diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And so the bio cleanse scared me really bad when I first started Plexus. I'm like, I don't need that. <laughs> I don't have that problem. You know, I don't have constipation. Um, but then the more I read about it, I'm like, well, I got to start taking this stuff. So I actually take two of those a day and it seems to be fine with me because of course I have my bowel movements are fine, but should I be taking more than two? It kind of like scares me to take more than two. I figure, well, if two is working, I should probably stick with it. <laughs> well, you know, two might be fine for you. This, y'all, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not trying to really give medical advice. I need to make that really clear, but I will say that if you on two, you're having good bowel movements. You are having a minimum of one, at least two, and they're pretty solid. They're not like really running yucky stuff. You know, like they're normal bowel movements. You probably don't need to go to three, but if you go up to three, 
and then it starts getting really loose, then that might be just too much for you. Then it also might be that you're detoxing a little bit more. It's kind of hard to know until you just work through the process. God made all of our bodies so different. So your reaction is going to be totally different from mine. It's just something you have to figure out yourself. Thank you. Okay, I see a couple questions down here. Um, let me see if I can address these questions real quick. Um, I, I'm guessing the question is, is there sometimes urinary tract infection issues with Epsom salt baths? Um, personally, none that I've ever read of or that I'm aware of. I suppose there could be, but I'm not aware of it. I've not read any anywhere, so that might be something later I'll have to Google and check to see. Uh, yes, it's being recorded. <laughs> I don't know of any issues with Epsom salt baths. Uh, does the magnesium hydroxide and calcium ascorbic in the bioclans create magnesium ascorbic? I wish I could answer that question appropriately, but that's something I would have to go back and refer to Plexus and ask them exactly how that's created. Does anybody else have the answer, Kim or Jamie? I don't. But you can definitely, Carla, you can email um, Plexus and they will ask their people and email you back. Yes, I don't have a clue on that either. It's products at uh, plexusworldwide.com, I believe. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, somebody put on here that they've recently watched, or they've watched Food Bank on Netflix and it's excellent it is I totally agree if you haven't watched it I think everybody needs to watch food matters yeah. <laughs> it does fed up is also really good ladies yeah. we are and men if there's men on here we are also discussing possibly doing a whole 30s food group after we get back from convention and detox from convention um, and then we're thinking about doing a whole 30s um, detox like month where um we kind of have a support group and we work through the whole 30 um and then support one another so we're all kind of praying about that crystal and carrie and i praying about doing that um after convention so we'll be sure um if we do go forward we'll be sure and share that on everyone's page so we'll all know and y'all can get in on that if we decide to do it yeah i've heard a lot of people have success with that well, what i found what I found when I went on different diets that I do really well until I start introducing other foods back in. Um, and I don't notice any changes right away, but then before you know it, all of a sudden I'm very tired and um, back to more pain. And <laughs> so how do you know when your candida is really all gone or what's the best way to have that check? You know, let, let me just, I can just tell you from my experience, that's more than I can and speak to. Um, I went to what's called a functional medicine clinic. This is before I started Plexus, okay? And I had to get food sensitivity testing done to find out what were problems for me. And the dietitian that I was working with told me that I needed to, there were certain foods that were going to have to be out of my diet for at least three months, certain for six months, some for nine months, and some possibly forever. I am 22 months into this process, and I've just now been able to reintroduce a couple of those foods. So it is, for me, personally, it's been a much more longer process than I wished it had been, but I'm trying to just continue to take it slow because I want my body to heal, and I want to get past this, like 100% past this. So I would encourage you that if you decide to do something like the Whole30, which would be good for you, know that you're going to have all those things out that you, that you should for the first 30 days, and then go super slow when bringing these things back in. But kind of the five R's that I just talked about, often people do where they remove certain foods for a time period, then they start adding them back in. But that's the only R that they addressed. 
they didn't really work on making sure that the yeast was under control or they didn't work on resealing the gut. They didn't work on some of the other aspects. Therefore, they didn't get the full recovery, if that makes sense. So it might be that you need to think about okay. removing foods, continuing with things like the ProBio5. You might even need to consider adding in another antifungal uh, to help with it as well. Um, so that you just feel like you can really get past this and then work on either doing the bone broth or the um, gelatin um, or something else to help to work on healing the actual intestinal wall too. Okay, thank you. Does that help some? I hope. <laughs> it's hard. It's a yes. hard process. It's not easy. But it's worth it. Totally worth it. Does anybody have thinking that? about starting the Daniel fast with fruits and vegetables? <laughs> Some people have done really well with that. I personally know that my body needs lots of protein, lots of protein. So I, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> so, but some people have done well. Oh, okay. I just say pray about it. Anybody else have questions or anything else? Thanks for listening to me. I just want to tell you, I appreciate that. <laughs>